Hi, so good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. Um, I'm gonna get swiftly into this because I wanna get through it pretty fast. Um, I've got my screen share on, so I'm gonna dip into the presentation and make it a full screen so that you can hopefully, hopefully see it. And Trent, you can give me a thumbs up if you can see the presentation properly. Is that on? Perfect. Okay, so the first question I want to ask is, who goes to the gym? Because I was in the gym this morning and it was a, it was a pretty hardcore workout. And it reminded me of how our brain always gives up before our body. We might be feeling tired in our legs, but actually it's our brain that gives up. There's always physically something left in the tank and if we can get our brains to push us, then we can go, you know, two extra reps, 10 extra reps. There's always something left in the tank. And that's the truth about our mind and our brain. Our brains, if you were on my um, presentation the other day, it always controls us if we don't control it. So the good news is that we can deliberately reshape our neural pathways and actually physically rewire our brains for more fulfillment and success. And mindset is where we start. So mindset, as you can see in the title, a better mindset equals bigger growth. And it's one of the, the most significant things that separates out the not so successful from the really successful people in this world because poor mindset actually does equal poor results. So again, going back to the gym example this morning, if I, if I listen to my mindset and think, oh, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do another extra thing, then I stop. And if I stop, then I'm actually not getting the results that I want to out of my gym practice. I'm not building the muscle. I'm not like um, increasing my, my fitness nothing actually changes if we don't push through at when our mind tells us to stop. So we have to believe we can push through those limits to achieve what we want. And what happens when we start to push through at the gym, you know, we do that extra two reps, we do that extra 10 reps, we do another 20 reps than we ever thought was ever possible. And our belief grows. But the really cool thing is that we can actually build a belief without actually ever physically doing those extra reps. And I'm gonna talk about that tonight. The not so cool thing though, is that if, um, if we shift our goalposts, so we do those extra reps, we're like feeling really good, but then we have a whole new goal. We're gonna get into a whole new exercise. We're gonna try a whole new machine. Um, if we shift those goal, those goalposts and we set our sights higher, our belief has to shift as well because belief is a never ending pursuit. It's got to be ever evolving. Otherwise, we, we would just create this space for our inner critic to talk. So every time that we're, we're evolving our goals, we should also be evolving our belief. And that is all driven by our mindset. So that's why you see the most successful people around you always have a coach. And if our vision grows and our belief doesn't grow, we can actually find ourselves lacking confidence in our ability and, and even like, you know, really being held back by the idea that we tell ourselves that we're not good enough. So we have to work on ourselves constantly to identify the counter intentions like belief. Um, just got a chat there. Hang on. Okay, so with the chat, I will read them at the end, um, unless it's a question and then, and then put it up your hand. So we have to work on ourselves constantly to identify the counter intentions that hold us back, those negative messages, negative narrative that runs around our mind and causes us to have destruct destructive behavioral patterns that really sab sabotage our success. And practice, 
mental practice is the thing that rewires the brain and enables us to take the action that we need to take to succeed. So this PowerPoint, this uh, presentation, this webinar is going to give you eight powerful techniques that you can start to practice straight away. So it's not about being motivational. This isn't a motivational webinar. It's actually a really practical webinar with some serious biohacking that will give you that <laughs> mindset that will make you the best you can possibly be. So a quick, um, a quick introduction to me. <clears throat> I'm a big believer in the law of attraction. Um, it really guides everything that I do. Hence why I know a few of you have been through the, the manifestation challenge with me. And I've had a real journey of, of belief um, and self-esteem and self-worth. And so I'm really committed now to helping others to build their belief and to, to move forward in their lives. Um, love extreme wellness, you know, the idea of pushing past our limits, both physically and mentally, but I'm also a mum. I'm also an athlete and, um, a self-defined freedom junkie as well. And I'm a certified coach. So I, I generally work with the whatever it takes types of people to help them live their best lives and achieve optimal wellness because often we get stuck behind past experiences that create limiting beliefs that, that really stop us taking the action that we know we need to take to succeed. So by working with the functionality of your brain, I help you to accept and heal from past experiences and walk forward in your true identity. So really get to know yourself again, build your belief and get you walking towards unstoppable success. I use the same approach to wellness. So I, I work using a process that's created by you, for you, and I, it's enabled by leading technology. So I'm working with precision DNA testing, um, technology to help you measure your personal biometrics, and all enabled by a really sophisticated artificial intelligence for personalized nutrition and fitness advice. So like I say, I'm an athlete. Um, I'm an amateur Muay Thai fighter here in New Zealand. But in 2017, I actually gave up fighting completely. Even though it was a dream, even though it was a passion, I just couldn't get past my mindset that had been created out of my own past experiences that I wasn't good enough. And I told my coach that I had to take some time out from the physical training to actually work on up here. And this began an incredible journey because there was a lot to heal from my past. And although the journey was challenging, possibly more challenging than anything I've ever done, um, it's also significantly changed my life. And now, like I say, I'm committed to changing the lives of others. So you may not feel like you have a specific issue with your mindset. You might already be working on your mindset or maybe you definitely know that it's your mindset holding you back. I will help you with this presentation wherever you are um, because of that reason, because we should always be consistently working on ourselves. And we've always got potentiality untapped. So all of us have this big, same brain supercomputer as well that I'm going to talk about um, now. And that goes through our lives, collecting up all of those past experiences and filing them away. And when that inevitable moment comes where we lack belief or have a moment of self-doubt, it just dives into the evidence that it can find from your past experiences to validate the fact that, you know, you shouldn't go forward. And this affects our productivity. It limits our success. It can cause us to suffer anxiety, depression, all of these things that really hold us back from that, that um, tapping into that potential we all have. So whether you're aware of these limits or not, um, on the flip side, everybody has this incredible brain that we can manipulate for better success to achieve limitless abundance. And I'm all for limitless abundance, hence the, the freedom junkie 
title. So elephant in the room, am I fighting again? Yes, um, but moreover, my business has exploded through that work that I began to do on myself. So I'd like you to think about your, your status quo with your mindset, where you're at, and then ask yourself what getting rid of your personal blocks would do for your business, your life, or both. So I'm sure um, that you've been through at some point the process of establishing your why. So the reason why you're doing whatever you are doing or, or thrive, um, striving to achieve whatever you want to achieve in your life. And it should be the reason that we believe we are good enough. It should be the thing that makes us deeply feel that we're capable of whatever life puts in front of us to undertake, to push through those limits that we place on ourselves. So why don't we? And it goes back to the, the brain being that giant super computer and the fact that our experiences create our beliefs that dictate our actions. <clears throat> and if you really look at your life now, honestly, because as Jim Rohn says, I love this quote, you know, the picture of where we are gives us, gives us a truth. It gives us a truth and that truth gives us freedom. So if you look at where you are in your life and the size of your results, you can actually see an indication of the size of your fear as well, because the smaller the results, the greater the fear, even if those fears are subconscious. So if we look at this, um, this slide right here, uh, I'm not sure if you've heard me talk about the, the acronym BEAR, which is that our beliefs drive our enthusiasm, which drive our, drives our action, which drives our results. I absolutely love that because for me, it's completely true. And what happens is the B gets replaced by F, which is the fear. And this is when our enthusiasm dwindles and where our actions then get limited by ourselves and our results start to, st to suffer. So back into that gym example, you know, you're doing those, those exercises, you start to believe, you start to, you start to feel the anticipation of the pain if you keep going, <laughs> you know? So your brain actually starts to tell you you can't do it. And that's when you don't do it. And there's just, there's just no movement in your, in your results, you know, because you're not pushing your, yourself past your own limits. And when we're doing that, it's actually like showing up to prove that we're going to lose. It's really, um, yeah, it's, it's a common thing to do, um, but it's really, really a bad thing to do. And it's because of a process that actually takes place in our brains. So let's look at the fear. And the definition of fear is actually the, the anticipation of pain, like I just said, but it doesn't have to be that physical pain, like in the gym. Um, it's the anticipation of a painful feeling. So a past emotional hurt, um, a time where you've been rejected, those are all, all pain in some way. And our big brain supercomputer, like I say, searches out the evidence that it needs that the trigger of that feeling to avoid or to not throw yourself all into something or to procrastinate or to hesitate or to second guess our actions, limit our actions and ultimately limit our results. And the truth is that most people are likely living past experiences on repeat because of this process, because they lack a conscious control of their mindset and lack an awareness of the fears holding them back. So like I say, those fears could be subconscious, but they affect how they show up, how we show up in our business and they affect how we show up in our lives. And really the biggest thing is that they affect um, the success that we allow for ourselves so that that potentiality remains untapped so to achieve the success that we actually deserve 
we must enable ourselves to take the action, the massive action that we need to succeed, but we also need to create a belief that's stronger than the, than the fear, that's stronger than the fear that creates the counter intentions that are holding us back. And that's what we're gonna get into now is the how. And it comes down to consciousness and awareness of our thoughts so that we can detach in the moment and not be driven by the feelings that activate the limbic part of our brain that can only recycle that old information, those past experiences, those past that lead to past patterns of behavior and override rational thought, creative thought, productive thought, and ultimately move us away from pain towards pleasure. But the thing is, that generally our pleasure is actually our comfort zone, which I actually redefined as the place where we're comfortably miserable, because although it's comfortable, our potentiality is untapped there, and we feel it because we know deep down we're not living the life of our dreams. And it's usually the place where we're completely out of alignment with our true authentic self, and it's beautiful path for us. And we lose sight of that path as we go through life and we have these past experiences. So who has found themselves in a position where they've looked at their life and seriously questioned how the hell you got to where you are? You know, one of those moments where you just know that, that something's not right. Um, who suffered anxiety or is suffering an anxiety or depression or found themselves in, a, in an abusive, abusive relationship that they're just putting up with, or got to a place where they feel they're going round in circles, just round and round and not getting to where you really want to go. If we're able to look at something from an external perspective by, by, through our mindset and acknowledge that everything we feel is causally based, we can actually interrogate the cause of the feeling using our powerful neocortex and control the effect with the same part of the brain. We can actually choose to create a different response. And this is where life starts to change. This is where we start shifting out of our comfort zone. And the question is, how do we start doing this? How can we build that consciousness and awareness and limit the detrimental effect of our thoughts on our vision and our intentions and how we self-sabotage our success. So the first one is, is really simple and it's something that I think we will probably try to do but then we let something slip. So we must really consciously look at our influences and question whether they are positive for us because our brain can't tell the difference between reality and non-reality. So for example, if we're watching something sad on the television, that's why we cry because the brain can't distinguish that what we're watching isn't real for us and it triggers a thought that triggers a, you know, a sad emotion. So the first big thing is to look at your day, perhaps start a reflection journal of who you're with, what you're watching, what you're hearing, even if you're not sat down listening to it. Um, a big one's the radio in the car, you know, the talk between the songs, but also the songs as well, because they trigger emotions and they're not necessarily positive emotions. Think about the news on the, te on the television that's constantly sensationalizing disaster. Um, and a really hard one is friends and relationships because often because they're friends and they're, and they're close relationships, we let it slip that actually what they say to us is really detrimental for our thought systems and our belief systems. So get a reflection journal and just start writing what is and interrogating whether it's serving you and how you can replace the negative with the positive. And replacing with positive is thinking about things like podcasts, um, silence. Silence is a hugely positive influence upon us and helps us to connect with our intuition. Um, TED Talks, 
coaching, you know, think about the positive influences that can replace the negative influences. The second thing is um, self-defeating language. So our self-defeating language is based on our beliefs. I was with a client the other day who is a nutritionist. She's a mum of four. She's been building her business for two years and really building hard. You know, she's, she's gone all out and actually achieved what she set out to achieve, which is a thriving nutrition business. The thing is that this nutrition business is bombarding her life. She finishes at half past nine, half past 10 at night. She's trying to relax with wine because she can't turn her brain off to go to sleep. And I asked her about, well, we got into time management and how she came up with the possibility that she'd thought of already about booking people two weeks ahead to have a better schedule. But she told me that it's a leap of, a leap of faith that those clients will actually book in. And that was a really powerful message to me about her beliefs. And I, I called her on it and I asked her what that makes her, what that says about her belief in herself. And she said, it makes me, it's because I don't believe I'm good enough. It, it's because I don't believe I'm good enough that they will actually book in in two weeks. They'll just go and find somebody else. So when we turn that, that statement into a question and we ask, why are you good enough? You know, and we get that powerful part of our brain answering that question. You know, the fact that she's got clients coming out of her ears, the fact that she's studied, the fact that she's worked her backside off for four years or, or however long it's been. All these reasons of why she is good enough, she can actually change her belief and she can actually take a different action to, um, to make her life better. So, you know, shifts in our thought help what we want to become reality. Thoughts become physical feelings too. That's really important to remember that everything we feel attracts or repels the manifestation of our vision. So when we create feelings that are negative, remember we're sending out really confusing messages to the universe. This vision, I want a really, really successful nutrition business. The feeling, I'm not good enough to have that. You know, the universe doesn't know what to do with that and will not manifest her success because what she's saying is one thing, what she's feeling is something different and the feeling will always be stronger. Number three, use positive affirmations. We can change our beliefs by literally rewiring our brain with new thought. So we can install, just like a computer, those new thoughts. And by thinking them, we're raising our vibration um, by speaking like the person whose dreams have already happened for them. And a really good one for me when, like I said, I shifted the goalposts of my own success. And so my belief had to catch up. And obviously I felt fear. I felt the anticipation of my pain, my personal pain, which was fear of success. So to help me rewire my brain and rewire my belief systems, I used a really powerful affirmation. I am, bod I am embodying the absence of trust. I am feeling myself fly. And that worked really well for me. So think about, you know, the feeling that you want to overcome and the affirmation that will help you to overcome it. Um, in my fighting, I use affirmations all the time. I am strong. I am capable. I have trained enough. I am aggressive. I am worthy of success. And talk like you already are because our brain doesn't know that it's not true yet. Um, how to think of those positive emotion, um, positive affirmations, take your statement of what you believe. It's a leap of faith and ask yourself an empowering question why it isn't. And from there, you'll find the positive affirmations that are really going to serve you and your success. Number four, use gratitude. This is similar to the positive affirmations and I could do a whole webinar on gratitude um, but it's similar because by going through the day saying thank you it's like you're acknowledging that your vision is going to happen for you 
So if anybody wants to implement gratitude or improve how they're experiencing gratitude, message me because I have um, an abundance activator with three things that you can start doing every single day to start embodying gratitude. And I mean embodying gratitude because I'm going to talk about that in a minute, but you know, it is a feeling, it is a state that we can create gratitudeness and it is powerful. So number five, both positive affirmations and gratitude um, lift our personal energy. So to do this even more, seek out the things that bring you joy. You know, it's very easy in our comfort zone to do the things that we've always done, to do them the same. And they're not necessarily the things that, that bring us joy. And in doing that, we, we lower our vibration significantly. So again, take that reflection journal and start noting the things that just make you buzz, that make you feel happiness, that make you feel joy, that make you experience ease and start doing those more. Another really important thing is to get to know yourself again. Um, personal development helps you to do this. But also in my course, on my online course, um, From Fear to Fears, I help you to deeply understand yourself and find, remember what it is that you love. Um, in business, you can do this by actually delegating the tasks that just aren't good for you. <laughs> you know, we all have them, we all struggle through them. It messes with our personal vibration. So where you can, delegate and do that at home too. You know, things like mowing the lawns. If you can afford to pay somebody else, pay somebody else. Why drag down your personal energy doing things that you don't enjoy? Life's too short. Um, another really important thing in business is to notice when an action is too hard. And I'm not telling you to be a sook and give up. <laughs> I'm telling you that, that it's a sign from the universe that it's not the right time to take that action and that there's something that you need to learn first. And often it is something within you, something um, that you need to learn about yourself or about your perception of your world. So put it to one side, get into your personal development. And I promise you the resolve for that action will show up really, really like it'll just show up in your life. Um, number six, watch how you react to things. So when we respond negatively to things outside of our control, it affects our level of happiness, but it also affects uh, that mental narrative. It feeds that mental narrative that triggers the emotion that causes us to repeat those past um, experiences. So start noticing how you respond. Again, a positive affirmation was really powerful for me here. In the moment, I, I say in my mind, um, everything is happening around me, nothing is happening to me, I can control how I respond. And it just gives me that break. It gives me that break before I go into the negative pattern of being frustrated, feeling annoyed, snapping, you know? So you can use your positive affirmations to, to trigger that moment to detach. Number seven, think bigger. Think really wide, clarify your vision, but lift your vision as well. Start setting unreasonable goals. I've got a video about this that I can share, you know, because there's no ceiling on your vision and there shouldn't be. It's our beliefs that drive the, where we put the ceiling, you know. So just override that by setting your vision as, as big as you want. The belief will come if you do the personal development to, to get you there. And seeing really is believing. Um, although... In the webinar yesterday, the presenter said that believing is seeing, but it's the same thing. Seeing it in our mind first, everything's created twice and it starts in our imagination. So number eight, as you can see, I've moved these around on the slide, but number eight is to constantly work on yourself. Because when you do, you're building those new neural networks of belief. And out of all of those steps, that's the most popular powerful thing because by working on ourselves current um constantly 
we can become very aware that everything is about our feelings and we can see our patterns and we can notice where we can change things and we can be empowered to change things as well. So Tony Robbins has that, that quote about gratitude that I pointed to earlier in that gratitude is the antidote to fear because fear is the, if fear is the anticipation of pain, we're thinking about it, we're thinking about what's coming and that creates the feeling of fear that replaces our belief which is going to go into that same old pattern of, of dwindling our enthusiasm and affecting our action, which is obliterating our potential results, you know, by replacing that feeling, um, any negative feeling with gratitude immediately, embodying that gratitude, we're actually bypassing the thought process completely to create a positive feeling instead. Um, so fear is a powerful counter intention. I really want you to think about this and how it's at play in your life. Our negative thoughts are not easy to switch off. They're not. We have 70,000 thoughts, I think, running around our minds every single day. We're not consciously aware of most of them. So fear is easily triggered by our thoughts. And we, I guess, so more often than not, our fears throw us off track without us even knowing it. However, when we're doing the work to become conscious, to increase our consciousness and increase our awareness, especially of our fears and the fact that they're an issue for us, we can actually see them from an external perspective and use that neocortex of our brain to identify the beliefs that have created them and make a powerful change to change our situation. So a really quick example is if you're in this position where you're completely exhausted because you work really hard, that's your current situation, that's your comfortably miserable, and you're doing it because of the belief that by working hard, that's how you make money, that's the only way you can make money, and if you stop, you'll experience poverty. So the fear there at play is, is fear of scarcity. So you can ex interrogate what um, actually caused that, what experience created that belief. And you can ask yourself whether that belief is serving you and what you might do differently if you were to believe differently. And you can create that new belief system. So I take you through an activity like that in my course, From Fear to Fierce, and it's really powerful. Um, but a great action that you can do just from home is to take a whiteboard, get rid of your dream board, replace it with a belief board and just write down your new beliefs and start seeing them every single day. Um, it's this type of awareness that alongside consciousness will help you to grow through active repetition of those steps that I shared with you today. And just remember that you haven't arrived where you are by coincidence. You've arrived because there is something that you need to learn and belief that you have to build. Our struggles indicate that there's something we don't know, there's something that we don't have, and there's something that we need within ourselves. So I want you to ask yourself a serious question about your daily rhythm, the things that you do every day, both in your business and in your life, and ask yourself whether what you are doing is actually making your success inevitable. Because I know that we all want the same thing, and that's to reach our goals, whether it be time freedom, um, to spend with those that we love, business goals, success, whatever it looks like, career, meeting the, the love of your life or travel. It's, it's, all, it's all the same thing. And your work to improve yourself consistently for, that, um, for those goals to happen, for you to tap into your potential, must be up-leveling your, your, I've lost track of my thoughts. <laughs> So your work to improve yourself must um, up level. It has to up level. And a coach, my coach actually told me that 80% of my work should be on me. 
And I thought she was crazy until I tried it. And I realized that that's how all successful people do it. And if we want to get to their level, we have to do the same. So I've created something to help you, something to help you stay focused, something to help you stay on track with personal development so that you're pushing through your, your upper limits constantly. And it's something that's gonna give you personalized attention and faster growth. And the cost of it is less than a meal out just for you every single month. Because I don't want you to break out into a sweat trying to figure out how to consistently work on you. I want to provide you with the tools. So I've created um, this little package called the 202020 package, which is 20 US dollars a month. And you'll get a 20 minute audio with a step-by-step -step, um, guide to your personal development for the month. There'll be a different focus every month. You'll get a, an active voucher for extra coaching if you require it. However, every single month, there'll also be a group coaching session, which will be personalized to your questions. Um, and you, you'll be able to send those through to me. So on, on a week two, I think it is, you'll be able to send through your questions and the group coaching session will be created by that, through that. And you'll also get weekly accountability and email, um, tips, email tips. So there's the link for the 202020 package. And here's my details. Like I say, if you want the abundance activator, please reach out and I'll, I'll send that across to you. That's for your gratitude actions. If you want to follow me on YouTube, I'm Claire Williamson. Um, also other social media as well, um, Facebook and Instagram, there are the links. And I also have my inspired community on Facebook, which is a phenomenal group where we do personal development all the time. Um, we inspire each other, but really the 202020 package is gonna be personalized to you by giving you that outline every month and the steps to work on you consistently, but also taking it to that next level of working out your own personal um, block by having that group coaching session. So that's me. I hope that this uh, webinar was useful. Lovely to see you here. And I will hopefully hear from you soon. And I'll just give you that link one more time in case you wanna take a screenshot. Thank you guys. Bye-bye. Take a screenshot.